again. Here we are again. What do you want to talk about today? <laughs> Finally feeling <laughs> consistent. <laughs> you know, actually, I <clears throat> I had a great conversation. I was an interview on a podcast yesterday, and I thought that it, it went in such a great direction that I thought it'd be a great topic for for us because I think it's it totally applies to where we're at in time and space. Yeah. Um, in the market with relationship capital. I love that term. Um, you know, I kind of wanted to start off. We've been meaning to do this is that, you know, part of what I bring to the table is just the outside the box solutions. And, you know, I've seen a lot of posts, which I'm sure you have a lot of agents asking, like, what's what's the best lead source? Where's the best place? And I always love it when you're like, TTP, talk to people. <laughs> yeah. Right, <laughs> like that's, that's the best lead source yeah. is talking to people. And I always look at his relationship <laughs> capital yeah. because part of what I was relaying in, you know, a leadership call yesterday was everybody's talking about their lead gen and they're this and they're that and what they're spending. And I'm like, um, am I, am I a lone ranger here? Because I don't spend any money on leads. I don't buy Zillow. I don't realtor. Like I don't do any of it. Yeah. It's all organic conversation and relationships is where it comes from. But I think being outside the box is some of the things I wanted to bring up today was some of the things that people could be doing that I think they have forgotten about or don't even realize that they could be doing. So relationship capital. And I think the one that's, that's, you know, story wise, that's the most on the tip of my tongue is, um, the cow house. Yeah, um, <laughs> that's a we, good story. We, we bring it up all the time, but the cow house actually has, you know, the beginning of it actually stems back from relationship. And we're, we're talking about like, when you look at genealogy, and I think for anybody in any sales business to go back and do a genealogy on like where a client originated oh, from. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So right. I go back to this particular story, you know, set the stage. It's 2006. I'm knee deep or 2007, I guess it was in Fannie Mae properties. Well, back then we were, you know, we were getting Fannie Mae properties. We weren't being paid very much because, well, the prices were $50,000. So right. the average commission was a thousand bucks. And we were posting to try to sell these things on our own in Craigslist back when <laughs> Craigslist was a good lease source. Yeah. And That's I'll never, I'll never forget getting a call from a guy and meeting him. And when I met him, he was, he was a rookie cop and, uh, driving his crotch rocket, always telling me these crazy stories of being in trouble. He reminded me of like one of those, one of those movies that actually it kind of reminds me of, uh, bad boys. He, him and his partner was always be in the office, like getting in trouble for, you know, tearing That's up, awesome. tearing up Phoenix <laughs> and, uh, I sold him his first house and it was a Fannie Mae property. I double ended it and he was such a great guy. And then that led to the sale with his mom moving out here. And that led to him referring me to multiple other Phoenix police officers. But there was one other police officer that also turned into multiple sales and the cow house came from this relationship. <laughs> so the cow house was like genealogy. It's all over the place, like where it originated <clears throat> from Craigslist. Right. <laughs> Seriously, it originated from Craigslist 14 years ago. That's awesome. That's where, that's where the relationship capital brought all the way full force. But this particular relationship was, I got a call middle of the afternoon and she's like, Hey, We've been trying to, our whole squad knows you're the crazy realtor that does the weird stuff. Like yeah. we all know you by that. Yeah. And we have this guy that's retiring and he needs a crazy solution, but his wife's out of town today. Can you go look <laughs> at the house? And so I went over and looked at it. You know, it's, it's kind of typical, but he's getting ready to retire after 35 years and his wife is gone. They have done nothing to the house. Like it's pretty much 1975 original. And he's retiring and they want to buy their dream house. They want to buy a new build. The problem is they don't want to do the work. They don't want to go through the market cycle and new builds right now. There's no contingencies. Right. So they couldn't have a contingent upon it. They couldn't show that they had proof of funds to close on it. So with them, um, I went through and actually purchased their home, let them live there for six months, sold them a new home, got them into that. And then went back and, that house again, you know, 
relationship was because of the strategy I could provide for them. And it was completely right. outside the box, outside the norm in, in that relationship. But the person that referred me knew what they needed and they needed something that wasn't traditional. Right, right. Yeah. And so we call it the cow house because <laughs> the day I did get to go over and meet him and his wife, we are sitting at the kitchen table and his neighbor uh, keeps two cows on his property. And so we're laughing about it because mm-hmm. I'm at the table. I'm like, there's a cow walking across the backyard by the pool. And I'm like, there, is the cow supposed to be over there? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, it's fine. And I'm like, oh, man, I hope it doesn't fall in the pool. And next thing you know, kaplunk. <laughs> and I'm watching this like happen in slow motion. And the cow <laughs> literally fell in the pool and cows can't swim. Right. <laughs> so for the next 45 minutes, it's me and John and the neighbor trying to lasso the cow and get it direction over to the stairs to get it to out. To get out, yeah. <laughs> and then, cow. Yeah. So anyway, we saved the cow. The cow I was sold the house. freaking out. <laughs> saved the cow, sold the house. <clears throat> and then there was one more step in outside the box of the story is which, you know, I think this is where I wanted to lead into this with the relationship inside the industry. We sold the house as is. We decided not to do any repairs to it because of the market and because of Wendy's schedule. And now the buyer that bought it, they're conventional, so no big deal on condition. The appraiser came back, which again, the appraisal, the, the, the mighty opinion of value and condition. Well, they deemed it uninhabitable, which wasn't the case. People just moved out of it. So now everybody's freaking out. We're dealing with a newer, younger agent, doesn't know how to solve for any of it. Right. And I, it took me three tries to tell him like, I need to talk to the buyer. And then finally, I'm like, dude, I need to put, put the buyer on the phone so that I can explain to them how this is going to work because I can solve the problem if they really want the house and this is how we're going to do it. So we took the sale, we left the sale intact, okay. and I did a lease purchase to the new buyer. So the new buyer, they leased the property from us. We gave them permission in the lease to go in and make the repairs. She had to document and send me the things they were doing. And they put a pretty substantial non-refundable deposit down. So I was comfortable with all that. But now, actually, it closed today. And so then they got to go in and do the repairs the way they wanted to with their contractors, have it reappraised. And again, the loan was still intact. We just had to get a new appraisal. And so now they got to do all the repairs, take on the appraisal, and move everything through the process. And so that had to do with getting the agent to understand, like, hey, this is a win-win, yeah. outside-the-box solution that either you're going to go out and have to fight for these people to find another house, and oh, by the way, they already sold the other house they were supposed to move out of. So there was all these different pieces. Yeah, a lot of dynamics. Right, there was a lot of dynamics. But <laughs> finally, we got everybody to understand, and you know, the buyer's been great. You know, They're paying their rent, and we're talking to them. I actually get to go over there and see the house when it's all said and done. But I think the point to all of it is just all of it stemmed from relationship. Yeah. Everything that happened was sometimes the relationship that you have with somebody, you've got to look at maybe what what is the solution? Maybe you can learn from something like this. And I think there's a lot of that that's going to have to be outside the box in this current market if you're going to make things happen. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the relationships are huge, figuring out different kinds of solutions. And I think, too, your ability to be able to talk about the solution was stemmed from the relationship. It wasn't that you, they were like, oh, Steve has the solutions. It was more like you were just always there in the conversations and the rapport building allowed you to share the solution. Right. Right. Like getting a hold of that buyer, you had to consistently build a trust and rapport that you were able to finally talk to that person so that you could be like, look, I'm trying to save this deal for you. Right. And so it, it kind of has, you know, to do with that trust. So, you know, there's, there's been all these conversations in, and I think that, that this really, the conversation really applies to anything when it has to do with sales is, you know, I don't ever consider myself a salesperson. I think a, you know, a salesperson is somebody who tries to manipulate somebody into buying something that they're not necessarily ready to buy. Right. That's somebody that's like done the psychology of sales and you're asking the right questions and getting over the objections and all that other stuff. Right. And, you know, I I think it's more important that you have to take people down the path and build the trust and the rapport before you can get to that point. Well, and I think you do that a lot, too, by asking questions. You're really good at that. Like, you know, that's such a huge rapport building component. 
you got to ask the right questions. You have to ask questions, yeah. So the conversation we were having yesterday is, you know, he we were talking about sales from the fitness side. And, you know, not everybody's program for fitness is going to meet your needs, right? You have a different body type. You have a different blood type. You have different health. Like, there's all kinds of different reasons. So, therefore, you have to ask the right questions to figure out if, one, if they're a good fit for you. Yeah. You know, I think that's another point of the whole relationship thing is that, you know, hey, is this person a good fit to work with or For sure. are, are we not a good match? Oh, all day long. All day long. It's no fun to work with anybody that you don't enjoy working with. Right. I mean, if they're not a good fit, it's kind of like, it's okay. It's okay. I mean, how often have you done that, right? When you're, when you're working with people that you've been okay letting it go. A lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because there's there's some people, it's it's either <laughs> one I'm not going to get along with. Right. Because they're asking for more than I'm willing to give. Give, um, it's, it's a very common, it's a very common conversation when I'm talking to agents and also investor buyers with, these are the, these are the ground rules. I've spent 20 years learning this. And you might have a different perception, but this is the way I work. This is how I operate. And I will work with you, not for you, in building that relationship and building wealth. Because we have to work together. This isn't, you know, you um, controlling me at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. How do you go about, like, just even generating the relationship? So once you have them, you've worked together with them, like the cow house. Mm -hmm. What does that look like in terms of, you know, maintaining the relationship? You know... Maintaining the relationship is, which sounds terrible. I don't mean like me. You know what I mean. But like continuing to be engaged. Okay, I think that one of the things <clears throat> there's there's systems that people have put together, right? So like there's the thirty six touch. It's like the birthday cards and the stuff, right? Um, I think some people do see that as not a genuine touch. And I think that I could definitely do a better job out of it. It's one of the things in 2021 we're working better, Mm -hmm. you know, on maintaining our relationships um, because I want to put more emphasis on those relationships. But I think it's the little things and the genuine touches, the text messages, some little things like, hey, I was thinking about you today. How are you doing? Um, Reaching out to people when you see something, not necessarily commenting on their Facebook post, but reaching out to them privately, like when somebody loses a loved one, something of that nature. Um, Tammy Tammy likes to send people body parts when they have surgeries. (laughs) Super, yeah. I mean, it's good to have like automation, right? But then at the end of the day that you're literally really in front of your relationships because you're genuinely interested in how they're doing or what they've been up to or things like that. Right. Yeah, that's huge. I think uh, somebody that, you know, anybody can learn really well from is uh, Lizzie Hofer is probably the monster of like just the client appreciation piece of, you know, sending out cupcakes for everybody's birthdays and really having that, that system dial down into that and making people feel like they're connected. There's something to be said too, for creating a system that's quote unquote automated, but still personal. Right. Yeah. And hers is very personal. Yep. Yeah. That's awesome. So when you talk about like, like the relationship, what was the term that you used earlier? Relationship capital. Yeah. Relationship capital. How do you continue to grow that? Like, what is it, you know, Do you have a core centric group of people that are part of that initial, you know, trust group? (laughs) Um, yeah. So our database is probably, you know, I think the typical way, or I would say for if you're newer in the business, and I think this goes for any, any sales business, I think that you kind of group people into certain sections. So, uh, you know, Brian Buffini had one, which was like ABCD clients, um, we created a little bit different definition, which is we have a VIP, which are people that have referred multiple people to us. Um, they're, they've been past, not necessarily past clients, um, but they're a referral source or they're a private lending source. There's somebody that's contributing to our business on a regular basis, and that's where they become a VIP. And then we have our tribe. And our tribe is somebody that we've done business with. So they're a past client. We've sold a house to those types of things. So they're they're our tribe. They're our fans. And then we have our sphere. 
and the sphere is somebody that we know that we would like to do business with, which we're trying to build and invest in that relationship capital with them to do business with them. Um, so when you look at it, it's kind of a grade of, hey, how many people can we get from being a sphere in a tribe? Right. And how many people <laughs> can we get from tribe to being raving lunatics for our business and who we are? Yeah. We're, those, those are the people that will jump in front of the brown truck to make sure that <laughs> they do real estate with yeah. us. Um, but I think that's a, a great way to gauge people is that, hey, I know this person. I'd really like to do business with them, so I need to invest in the relationship. Right. So what can I give that person to invest in the relationship? Yeah. Um, you know, that's, again, that's the investment, right? When we talk about capital, mm -hmm. capital is investment yep. that you can pour into somebody to build something. So what is that, like, newer agent, how do they start this? I mean, is it, like, literally going through their contacts and kind of putting things into different buckets or... How would somebody brand new kind of really start to develop their relationship capital? Um, I think the relationship capital, I think the value is in what you can give. Giver's gain. Right. What you can give without looking for something in return. And without it being a sales pitch. You know, that was the one thing, you know, it didn't bother me at first because it was like, oh, well, I was 20 when I heard it. Um the whole, you know, write somebody a handwritten note and then tagline it with, oh, by the way, yeah. <laughs> do you know somebody? <clears throat> I just felt that that was very unnatural. Yeah. But I do believe that you have to get natural in how you ask for the business down the road. Yeah. But I think if you're creating that genuine relationship, I think that it will come around, right? So I think a lot of like in your business, you know, you're doing those things. You're at different events and people are connecting you with other real estate agents because of your personality. And then it's how much do you have to give before you get something in return? And I think, I think our industry is full of it from the lenders to the title reps to everybody. It's like, you know how many calls I get from lenders that are like, Hey, you know, I, I know you from here. I know you from here. I've seen you here. That's awesome, but here's my deal. I'm always willing to give somebody a try, but tell me what you're going to contribute to my business. Yeah. Like, what are you going to, you want something from me, what are you, you going to contribute in? And you have to kind of prove yourself to get in the doors Yeah. before you can get something back. Well, and I think too, sometimes it's just about somebody having something to say, right? Like, I, I like when somebody makes this genuine effort to talk about, well, let's have a conversation so that I can learn, so that I can develop and propose some ideas that could make an impact as opposed to, well, here are these five things that I could do for you, right? Like there's, I think um, you have to have a desire to really understand what that person needs, you know, to be able to offer some Back ideas. Back to the questions. Yeah, exactly. Because otherwise I think, uh, you know, I, I would never be able to talk to somebody and be like, well, I could do this, this, or this for you without getting to sit down and learn more about their business. The goal in creating or investing in relationship capital is to constantly be giving so that you are the person that is there when they're ready. Totally. And that's where, I, I think that's where some businesses are so focused on the automation that they're hoping that an email, a text message comes across when they're ready. And that works. Don't get me wrong. But it depends on how hard do you want to work. Right. Right. To get somebody you really don't know to trust you, yeah. like you, and depend on you in, in the business. A lot of times that comes through, you send them the right house. Yeah. Well, and I mean, in your for you too, I mean, working in the real estate space, you never know when that person's going to be ready. You never nope. know. I mean, it's such an investment in and of itself to just create a relationship with people because they're going to connect you to an opportunity or they will be the opportunity. Right. You know, and unfortunately, fortunately, I mean, I think to me, it's a fortunate thing is that we just get to talk to people, stay in touch with them, ask them questions, find out what's going on in their lives and see how you can, you know, help them get those ideas for building wealth legacy, generated income, things like right. that. So I think back to the question, you know, for, for a newer agent or somebody newer in sales, I, I really think it's about taking your contacts and thinking about what can you give in value to those people and not just those people, mm -hmm. but how do you give that same information in your social media? Yeah. I think that's one of the things that I've learned over the years is 
I'm just giving different information, right. different ways that I do things, how I do my business. Nothing's a secret. Um, in order for somebody to get to know me. And, you know, that was, that was a big part of yesterday's conversation was th- there's no secret to what I do. There, there's a lot of, there's a lot of tricks to what I do and I try to share as much as I can. Um, but I think through social media and through stories, you know, I've really gone in or all in the last 18 months on my stories, most yeah. more so than my posts, because I think a stories, you know, it gives you 30 seconds to capture somebody, to yeah. give somebody something and they can kind of see what you're doing and they get to know you. Totally. You know, it's one thing I like about the <clears throat> stories. I can go from, you know, my doing donuts in the car with my kids to showing a million dollar house to walking through a house that's completely trashed, like all in 30 seconds. Like right. <laughs> here's a glimpse of a day in my life. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Um, but I think that- Well, and it's happening in real time. Like you're usually sharing about things that are just happening in, in that moment, which is cool because it's very fresh. Right. Yeah. So I think that's that's where people add value, but it's thinking about, <clears throat> we're trying to give what we think people want rather than, trying to figure out what people are trying to learn about or want more knowledge about. That's why it's always fun and engaging on, on social to ask a question yeah, and then see what the responses are. Um, you know, you also get a fair share of like douchebag responses too. You're like, of course. Why, why, why yeah. would you say that? I mean, I posted the other day about, um, there's mean people on social. Are you yeah. serious? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Grant Cardone says, go get you some haters. I just, it's, (laughs) I I just, I have one of those things. If I don't have anything engaging to say, I'm out. Like, I'm not going to. I'm just not going to waste the time. But I posted the other day, um, do you have a passive income goal and what's that amount? And so there was like 102 comments, just different people's opinion of how they're creating passive incomes, when they want it, how they want it. And then there's one guy. And he's like, none of y'all's business. I'm like, uh-uh. So I look no, up the guy and I'm not. like, oh, okay. So I look at him like, oh, I'm like, way to grow your business. I'm like, the guy owns a turf company here. Well, I'm getting ready to put $10,000 worth of turf in my backyard. That guy's out. <laughs> totally. That's um, not funny. Because, but that's, <laughs> I know, totally off the subject. <laughs> but I, mean, but I why think. Why do people do that? It's so funny to be like, none of your business, but you took the time to post But it, it. goes back to relationship <laughs> capital. <laughs> so, people are so <laughs> so again, relationship capital. So now that guy's negative comment, rather than saying nothing. Right. You're not going to use him for anything. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. But he ruined that ability rather than say, oh, well, I'm trying to do these things or yeah. I don't know or I don't have a clue. I, I mean, love the conversation. So it's, yeah. just, it's just one of those things when you, you know, this is totally off subject. So it is what it is. Um, but anytime you make a comment that might be negative or not part of the conversation, you instantly open yourself up for somebody to check you out and go, well, not doing business with that guy. Or that guy's comment was very intriguing. Yeah. What else do they have to say? Exactly. Either way, they're they're getting you to check them out. So, I mean, (laughs) we can can talk about relationship capital in that aspect with social. You know, so where does a new agent start? Where does anybody new start in their business? Well, what can you give on social media in other people's audiences in order to engage with people? It's similar to talking to people, but what you're doing is you're investing, right? Right. You're investing a little time in hopefully getting something out of it, but you have to give before you receive. Totally. So if you're engaging in that and you give some good, whatever it is, or you're complimenting somebody on, Oh, that's a great, that's a great house or whatever the case may be. That's where it comes. Yeah. So, you know, I think my other advice for new agents, actually, this is advice for any agent. Um, there was something my coach, Kim Ryan, told me years ago that uh, was really irritated. This was like a year after my dad died, and uh, I was just pissed off about stuff. And Kim told me, she says, hey, here's the thing. Your dad showed you a lot of things to do, but he also showed you a lot of things not to do. Yeah. So just change those things. And and she was right. You know, I get a lot of my my heart and my genuineness and my generosity from my dad and definitely the crazy stuff that goes on in real estate in my head from my dad. Um, but one of the things that I realized that my dad did not do 
and I don't think a lot of agents did back in the days was they were not really big on relationship capital inside their own industry. Like, oh, I can't be friends with you because right. we could be competition. Yeah. And what I found, which I think helped in the REO days because there was just a small group <clears throat> of us, which we kind of had to work together as REO agents because they put us all in the same room and were like, hey, what's best practices? What's working to help Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac? And so we all got to know each other and it was like you would help each other out here and there. But then what I realized was, well, I can have some really cool relationships. So now you talk about relationship capital in yeah. the industry. So like peer to peer. So there's all peer. these different categories for the relationship right. capital. So peer to peer, I will give you some of this. Kim Kimberly Ryan, you know, she was uh, you know, she was the broker of of your good friend's company, Corinne. Yeah. And um I knew Corinne from the REO days. Actually, because you could never actually, Corinne was non-existent. You couldn't reach her for by phone for anything because I think at some time she had like 900 listings for, for HUD, I think was yeah. one of her big things. Yep. Um, so she was only a magical myth in my world. <laughs> um, but <The> unicorn. <laughs> but so I met Kimberly. She was the listing agent on the house that I live in now. I had never met her. Well, when Kim met my wife and my kids, and we went through a whole rigmarole. You know what? Rigmarole. Kim, yeah, rigmarole. Um, <laughs> Kim came to like our family, and she really wanted <clears throat> us to have that house and went through a lot of stuff to get it. And there was, like, some cancellations, some other stuff. But anyway, we ended up getting in the house. And when my dad died and I was going through some struggles, Kim coached me for a couple of years well, again, it was relationship capital. So another agent for, or another yeah. broker from another company, yeah. you know, I reached out and said, will you coach me? Totally. Because there was something about her that, that I liked and I wanted something outside my space. Yeah. And she coached me for years and she was, and still is, like when I call her, she still calls me little brother. Mm. Um, there's just still something about that time that I spent with her that was just so amazing and it came from somebody inside the industry that yeah. could have been competition or whatever. And so, you know, I look at that. I look at my relationship with George Lawton, relationship capital, right? Yeah. We, we, we've bought real estate together. We've partnered on stuff together. We've been able to go further with that relationship capital versus if I was like, yeah, George Lawton, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right? I don't care who you are. Um, <clears throat> so I've just learned how important it is. I've learned how important it is in this market right now my relationships and how I've treated people and who I've done business with over the years and the relationships I've maintained, what the difference is when you get into multiple offers. Yeah. How you've treated somebody in the past, how you've, yes. you've right? It, it all, it all Your comes full Your reputation for, precedes you, It all right? comes for, full circle. Yeah, So sure. I think that's probably one of the hidden things in today's market is how much time, you can spend a bunch of time lead generating, but how much time are you spending cultivating relationships, relationships. with yeah. other agents? And that's one of the reasons that, you know, I do my internal teaching at my home group a couple times a month yeah. is because I'm trying to give back. Like these are all people that have questions. They see what I do. They want to know. So I, I'm constantly trying to give back and, um, you know, invest in those relationships, you know, because that's how I'm being more known when a contract comes right. across a desk. Like, oh, well, I know Steve. I know what he teaches, what he believes in. And so it builds a, a confidence in that. Do you think that, like, people get to a place where they really are working on their relationships, but nothing's happening? Like, what's advice for that? Like, how do you help somebody that just some, – do you know what I'm saying? Like, sometimes people could be just, you know – doing their best to build relationships and maybe they feel like things aren't coming to fruition or nothing's happening or like how does someone kind of check themselves? So I'm going to go a little bit deeper on that. What do you mean by like they're investing in their relationships? What does that look like? Maybe they sent one thank you card this year. I don't know. Or maybe they think it's social as opposed to relationship building, you know? Um, how do people get deeper into their relationships or find the right people to connect with? <laughs> I think it circles all the way back around to probably podcast two or three that we did, which is know who you are and know who you aren't. Mm. Because if you're not being genuine in that relationship, people can see it. If you're only contacting somebody because of, yeah, you know, trying to 
get them to sell a house or whatnot, but you're not genuinely trying to connect with that person, then I think that's where, that's where you're not getting it. Yeah. So I think that you genuinely have to want, want that relationship. To. Yeah, for sure. Right? For sure. If, if you're genuinely calling somebody, you had better be doing it out of a genuine aspect yeah. to either add value or truly see how they're doing um, and find out, you know, I loved, uh, God, what book was I just reading? Oh, it's an old book. Um, that, uh, seven levels of communication, yeah. I think it is. Yeah. Um, I loved what, what he talked about there, which, you know, I really feel like I'm a dot connector, right? I want I want to connect the dots. His whole deal was calling people in this book. The premise was, how do you call people and try to connect, like figure out what they need? Yeah. How can I help you? Like, is there anything I, anybody I can connect you with? Oh, you're having a party next week with your kid's birthday? I've got this great taco cart you should call, send you the information. Yeah. So now you're genuinely trying to do, do things to um, appeal to that relationship and add value to it. That's awesome. You know what? Um, that book actually reminds me of another book now called Blue Fishing. Have you read Blue Fishing? Mm-hmm. It's really good. It talks a lot about that, like learning about what people need, bringing them resources and connecting the dots. So you're just like helping them progress whatever it is that they're trying to do right. faster. Right. Right. So, or whatever it might be. I mean, it might not even necessarily be a project or event or whatever, but something that you know that is of interest to them. Well, the interest is the other thing, like finding out what interests your clients. Yeah. So I think about, um, you know, a, a younger guy that, that I talked to two weeks ago, um, genuine relationship. He was telling me the books he had read and he was talking about buying a house, keeping a house. So we went down the investment road. So I asked him what books he had read. Cause he said, I just started reading all these like books. And so he's like the millionaire next door and rich dad, poor dad. Yeah. I'm like, those are all great books. Like Classics. those are the, the starters. And I'm like, can I send you one of my favorite books? And so Amazon makes it really easy to like jump in, send somebody a book. Totally. You don't have to have it delivered. You don't have to go get it. You don't do anything. And so those are the little things that genuinely impact somebody yeah. that you're thinking mm-hmm. and listening. And it's so easy, right? Like to your point, like you don't have to like, it's not about getting in your car, driving someplace and having to go shopping nope. and all of that. What do you think about relationship building in an era like now? Like I feel like right now so much connection happens digitally because of pandemic and whatnot. But I also think it's created this pathway for people to actually have really great connections because the fact that people had been quarantined or are staying away from others, I think like raises the craving for connecting with humans. <laughs> like, right. you know, whether it's on a Zoom call or over the phone or via text, or do you think that like um, people are more open to connecting in different ways now too than just in person? It's even oh, probably mo- even more important now. Yeah, it's even more important now. I mean, with Zoom, with FaceTime, with calls, I mean, I can tell you it's, it's the good and the bad that – you know, you used to love to go have coffee with somebody or have them come into the office to meet and go yeah. through it. But from a time standpoint, because everybody is so busy, I, I think it's awesome. We do our first totally. time homebuyer consults, things like that. We can connect with somebody through, you know, video. Yeah. Um, it's so much more acceptable and welcomed. Right. You know, like people are so okay with it. I think sometimes now people actually prefer it. Sure. Right. Show up in your pajamas. And- yeah. <laughs> just from the waist up, you just have to, you know, be presentable. Right. <laughs> um, I think that I just think that like today in digital, I think contribution, you can spend time contributing and investing and you can actually reach more people. Yeah. Just like, okay. Um, Somebody on social who I've connected with through a mutual friend uh, had posted about, hey, I'm looking for custom swag boxes. Anybody have any ideas? Well, we have custom swag boxes for Valentine Group. So I took the time and went and found the link and then posted it in there as a contribution. Right. Well, did that contribution help five other people that might not have commented but saw that post go, oh, cool. Yeah. I'll check that out. Well, and you also help that business. Right. Yeah. So it's it's little things that 
create big memories and impacts. Yeah, to go out of your way to get, find the contact information and, and all and that. And you'd be amazed, like the amount like, of text I, messages and people and, and the things that I get from different people. I just got a text message before we started. Um, another real estate agent, gal I went to church with from the time we were kids. She, um, actually, she works for Gubernick. Okay. Um, Cassie McClanahan. Yeah, I love her. You know, we were just talking and she she just sent me a message and we were going through like some investment strategies and she was remembering the bad of 2005 and like losing stuff and the market yeah. and those types of things and we were talking and strategizing she's like well, we want to do this but we want to do this and we're just going to cash out I'm like no we can do this just keep it like, trust me and so six months later, she sends a text message. She's like, I just want to let you know, I appreciate you, you know, having that conversation and giving me that information and pushing me in that direction because it's actually been beneficial. Yeah. And had I not had that conversation with you, it wouldn't have. Like, I, I'm awesome. not, I'm not looking for anything out of that, that conversation, yeah. but eventually it will be something down the road. Totally. Well, and it's also something you love. <laughs> I do love it. Yeah. So, I mean, in and of itself, it's kind of like if you love working on cars, you don't think of it as work. <laughs> right. Oh, I, I loved working on cars and then I hated it. Do you know what I'm saying though? Yeah. Like, I mean, you know, one of my best friends growing up, her husband worked on cars and if I ever needed breaks, he'd be like, let me do it. Let me do it. I'm like, no, you don't have to do that. He'd be like, right. I want to, like, he loves that. So that's cool. That conversation with Cassie, because that's going to, that comes full circle and it's something that you love to do. It's cool for you to see your advice come to fruition into something positive. Like well, it, it creates such a great, um, experience for her. It's a great story for you in terms of like the validity of the advice that you give people in your business. I mean, it's awesome. And, and I think that that's, that's the thing is that people do need to get to that point of what, what's the value that I can add. And for me, I'm trying to add value in the investment side. So there's a lot of conversations. Now, people may not always take the advice, mm -hmm. which is fine because it depends on the stage of life they're at. Right. But I want to have that long lasting impact. Like I'm, I'm hoping that the things and the conversations that I'm having now, I get to have those conversations with people in 20 years. Yeah. Going, Remember when that time when you told me to stop being a pussy about yeah. keeping this house Remember and that time at band camp, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, when, when I was whining in it or, you know, trying to yeah. get through this, it helped. And it's, it's even, even right now, I'm having conversations with clients where I'm glad that they allowed me to push them. I'm not a pushy salesman, but I'm talking about the push from helping them get over their fears that yeah. it's going to be okay and the what ifs. Um, all the people that bought last year that I'm talking to now, they're like, man, if, if we didn't push and struggle back then, we never would have bought a house because of what's going on in the market right oh my now. gosh, I know. And so those, those people are like being fortunate and those were relationships. And now those are things that yeah. are, you know, investment into people. And I think that everything that you do, no matter what business you're in, but especially real estate, that investment is into people. Yeah. So the investment you're making into the conversation, the text message is, you know, are you bettering somebody's lives? Mm -hmm. Are you making them smile that day? What, what are those pieces? And yeah. when you get to the point of, and I guess I would share this too, for newer people that are intimidated by, well, I might lose this person if I say the wrong thing or if I do the right, that's a scary thing. And I remember that feeling like you couldn't act too friendly with a client. And now it's like, you know, I, I got a call the other day. I just, I just sold, um, you know, an executive at zoom a house and I always answer the phone with him. What's up, homie? It, like that's the relationship we've create, created. Yeah. It's not this like professional stick up your ass conversation all the time. It's gotta be genuine. Yeah. And I think once you have that, it gives you so much greater ability to pick up the phone while you're driving in the car. Like, dude, I was just thinking about you. How yeah. are you doing? How are the kids? How are the family? For sure. Hope things are going well. Would love to catch up with you soon. Yeah. Right? Well, and I mean, as soon as you really are yourself, you will attract a lot more to right. you. I mean, when you're trying 
sometimes you don't even realize it, but when you're trying too hard, you're not really going to stick with the people you're probably meant to stick right. with. Right? right. So, and it's all in this genuine effort to do a good job, right? I'm trying to do a good job. I'm trying to progress my business, but I think that something happens for people at some point where like they find that switch where they realize I just, I could, I could just chill. I just be me. And if somebody doesn't like me, it wasn't meant to be anyway, but to your point, I you're still here. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe for another minute, but <laughs> <laughs> I guess the podcast is over today. <laughs> but, you know, for them to realize that, like, at the beginning, they're trying so hard to make success happen that you kind of lose touch with yourself as opposed to just always just be yourself. You're going to attract the people that you're meant to, to work with. Right. You know, and then if you're always in that vein of like that authentic effort to build relationships and connect with people, it's funny that you say connect the dots because my whole career, all I've ever said is I really don't know anything other than I love to connect the dots for people. <laughs> that's I've literally that's all I do. I really, that's how you bring value. To the relationship, that's all though. I ever do is just like, how can I connect the dots, right? So I always think, don't think of me as somebody from a title company. Think of me as somebody that can connect the dots for you in terms of helping you. With your that's business. your that's your contribution, though. That's that's how you're building that relationship. And I think the steps, you know, I think that I don't even know how many steps. I think it's three. Um, <laughs> I didn't count them out yet. I love that we're um, articulating. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I think the three steps to building that genuine relationship is is one. You have to give without looking for anything in return. For sure. So somebody calls and needs something with you. It's not, I scratch your back, you scratch mine. It's help. It's got to be, hey, I need your help. How do I go out and help them? How do I connect yeah. them with the right person, right? It may not benefit you right now. It may benefit 15 years down the road. You're not going to know. So you have to genuinely make that connection intentionally. I think that you also have to add value to people's lives consistently on whatever platform you're comfortable with. I like to connect with everybody that I know through story. That's that's the way I tell and share. I'm terrible with sending automated emails out because I'm constantly like, oh, well, that doesn't look good, so I'm not going to send it when I should just yeah. send it. But some people are really good at that. I'm not a good copywriter, so therefore my emails will be like, blah. Um, so, but I think that <laughs> you're you're adding those pieces of value to the audience in order to yeah. give, you know, and you're, you're giving, 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 and that's what somebody's going to be attracted to. Yeah. And the funny thing is, is that I'm seeing the fruits of that 18 months later from somebody's like, I mean, these are the constant messages. Hey, I've been following you for a couple of years. I'm like, I don't even know who this person is. Yeah, that's awesome. You said some things that had an impact and I'm ready to. So, by doing that and sharing, you may not think what you're doing is adding value, but you don't know because so many of us are so prone to likes and comments. The reality is there's 10 times the people actually looking at it that don't yeah. say anything. Yeah. They're total, my wife's total Facebook stalker. <laughs> She's like, I think everybody is too. Stalks, doesn't comment, doesn't do anything. Oh, funny. They're just a scroller. Yeah, they're a scroller. <laughs> yeah, they're they're a thumber. Yeah. Um, But then I think that, once you once you get to step three, step three is where you can genuinely ask somebody to contribute. Yeah. You can genuinely, um, they know who you are, either through social or through personal connections. Yep. And then you have the right to, now that you've built that trust and that awareness, to ask for the business. Yeah. You got to find your people. Right. You got to find your people, you know, and there's so many different mechanisms to finding your people, whether it's digitally, whether it's talking to everybody that's in your world. I mean, how many of us on a day to day basis interact with somebody that performs a service for us, like right. your hairstylist or whatever, the list goes on. But you have to find your people and then you have to have conversations. You know, relationships begin in conversations. You're no longer in a relationship when a conversation ceases to exist, right? right? So as long as you're always, you know, in conversation, you have the opportunity to bring value to somebody else, learn about them build rapport, and then continue to elevate that relationship to something that could turn into real estate. Right. Or they bring you something <laughs> from somebody else because right. you're, you're having conversations. You have to find your people and have the conversations. And I think that you can also do a, you know, I think it was always interesting when we first started. Um, actually, it wasn't when we first started. We were trying to generate new business when we were broke so we spent a lot of time volunteering at the preschool as teach yeah. rates because we we're getting to know people. We we're talking yeah. to people, but it wasn't from the, and, and I'll tell you again, it's one of the things I used to watch my dad do. My dad would be like, 
every swim meet I was at, every soccer game was some sort of like business function for him rather than establishing relationships with people and letting them ask, what do you do? What's going on? And so for us, like being involved at church in the nursery and going through those things and being at school, it was creating relationships right. with people. And they were genuine. So don't go volunteer somewhere thinking that you're going to get leads out of it. Yeah. That's It's it's a I difference. It's one of the things. I do too. I mean, I'd be pissed if somebody referred to me. Oh, I yeah, know. you're a lead 995. I Let know. me get right on that. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I tell the agents that work with me, I'm like, work on relationship yeah. generation, not lead gen. Totally. You know, all these people in their, their business are like, ah, oh, you know, from 9 to 11, I do lead gen. Um, we <laughs> cultivate relationships. Yeah, in that time. I would call it like you know relationship building time or something. Yeah. Like change the change the terminology, changes the mindset, and then all of a sudden that time frame that you sp- you're spending building relationships actually feels like that as opposed to why do you think people don't like lead gen because it feels doesn't feel good. It feels icky. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. feel like you're bothering people yeah. rather than genuinely calling people because then yeah. in relationship time. That can be anything. Totally. You could be calling to check yes. on, you know, Anybody. this past client. You could call somebody yep. from 15 years ago. You, you know, it's so funny. I grew up and I was super, super shy growing up until probably about, I don't know, 11th or 12th grade. And um, and this totally fueled my, I know you think it's, I, I'm not joking to you. My mom had to force me to go out and play. Like I was super, super shy. And honestly, I'm an introvert disguised as an extrovert. So Hence the laughing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the nervous laughter all the time. But I remember um, learning a phrase called Ford. Do you know what I'm talking about? Family, occupation, recreation, oh, I was thinking found on road dead. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> but no, like Ford is a great way to build relationships because when you meet somebody, tell me about your family. What do you do for a living? What do you like right. to do for fun? Tell me about your dreams. So that's kind of like how I was always working on building relationships was through Ford, family, occupation, recreation, dreams. So um you know, when you're trying to connect with people, like to think about those are the things that matter to the people you're talking to. Yep. They really don't care about you. People like to talk, <laughs> they about, want to themselves. talk about themselves. Yes. Right. And so if you can get people to share with you, you're, you work in a real estate space. And if you get people to share with you, the things that matter to them, their family, their occupation, recreation, and dreams, it inevitably leads to real estate. So, <laughs> well, you know, and I would, I would kind of wrap it up on this is that I think that In this day and age, we need to spend more time asking the right questions in order to get to the person's why. Um, You know, the right questions. You know, when I talk to somebody, I want to find out what their goals and dreams are. Can can you tell me about this? I know you don't think it has anything to do with right now, but I do need to know so we can get. Because... There's different things as to why Why do you want to be in this location? What's special about it? Um, why the fourth bedroom? Are you going to be planning on working from home? Are, are you guys planning on having more family? What does it look like? Because if somebody says, I'm looking for a two-bedroom, four-bath, but they don't have any kids, and you're like, well, tell me why the extra space. Oh, because yeah. you're, you're planning on a family member living. Okay, well, maybe we want to talk about a split floor plan, right? Because there are so many variables to what we do right? that if you don't ask all the right questions, you can't figure out how to guide them correctly because you don't have the answers to those questions. Yeah. And I like to call it, it's, it's, you know, guiding through the journey. Totally. Donald Miller's building a story brand is a perfect example. Yeah. He talks about, you're not the hero, you're the guide in their journey. Totally. So you have to ask the right questions in order to guide them through their journey to get from point A to point B to where they're the people cheering at the finish line yeah. and they're the hero. And that's where I think we need to ask more questions, yep. which ultimately builds a better relationship. And if you do those and you couple that with just some some outside the box ta- tactics, you know, with how do we how do we create this for you? Yeah. Because it, it might not work this way, but we're going to have to go outside the box and get creative, especially totally. in today's market. Yeah. It's a dance for sure. Oh, it's always a it's dance. It's a total dance. I mean, and I think that the question asking is such a big piece of it because sometimes when you ask the question, they may not have the answers or be open to sharing them yet. And you just have to continue the dance. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. Hey, so at the end of this, I'm very excited. Um, we are going to actually have our first guest. 
Yeah, next we time. are. Okay, I was like, what's happening right he's, now? He's <laughs> he's all dialed in. Um, you know, he's he's a great friend of both of ours. But yeah. uh, our first guest, which we're honored for him to be the guinea pig, um, <laughs> would be Brian North is going to be North. up next. Yeah, and, I'm super uh, excited. I'm not even really sure what we're going to talk about, <laughs> but I'm sure it could be broken up into a couple episodes. I mean, but I mean, we just have to let it go. I mean, yeah. let's just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because there's there's so much we can talk about, and yeah. he's just a wealth of knowledge. So we could build a whole series. Yep. <laughs> so we are excited to have him up next. Yay! All right, peace out. See yeah. ya. <laughs>